the Giro Stage 15 was, in my opinion, the highest level performance I've seen potentially this year. If not, definitely in this Giro and for the Giro for a long time in the past. This was absolutely unbelievable um, performance by Tal Gagan Hart. The numbers we're about to go into, wow, they are unbelievable. So if you didn't watch the stage, this is basically a quick summary. Break up the road, ignore them. They're no, no bearing on the result. Get up on the climb, somewhere but Astana, just whacking it big time. Then Kelderman attacks. Well, it's sort of like a Kelderman Hinley joint attack. Tau joins up. They basically ride full. Jao Almeida is also in the group, then gets spat. He basically limits his losses, and everyone else is just on the mountainside, stranded everywhere. And Tau Gegenhart, Wilco Kelderman, and Jay Hinley basically sprint out at the end. So the climb is Piancarallo, um, which is. 13.84 kilometers at 8 percent and we'll look at the kom first so this is jay hinley um so he's obviously hasn't uploaded his power data which is a bit annoying but the vam is huge the vam is 1760 um which is which is really unbelievable um i think the climb the gps is um pretty accurate as well which is good to see it is eight percent 22 kilometers an hour up eight percent is flying the climb is very steep um sort of at the beginning and then flattens off and is like six percent towards the top and uh i mean just try and ride at 1800 van it's unbelievable so you might say okay well charlie you you've said that he's climbed at good van but what are the watts per kilo i want to see this so this is oh actually that we'll go through nibali's data in a minute because that's from a different year um this is fausto masnada's data um who did 400 normalized but 394 watts which is 6.1 watts per kilo and if we look on the the time difference here um from fausto masnada one minute 40 down he was doing six watts per kilo um which is which is very crazy obviously um and it was a hard-ish stage before but nothing mental um you know 5.3 like you know sorry not it wasn't easy 5.7 and then 5.3 again um, or six watts per kilo here. So it's a decently hard stage, but they just raz this last climb. They are absolutely flying. Um, we're gonna go over to someone's data who I think is actually pretty pretty special. Um, this is Chris Hamilton. So Chris Hamilton set up this attack. Um, he set up uh, some weapon we've got Kelderman in order to win the stage. Um, and we can look at his power data. So obviously it's pretty obvious when he pulls off based on the massive speed difference. He rode at 6.2 watts per kilo on the front, which I think shows you the sort of level that these boys are at, that, that they are riding at 6.2 on the front. So in the wheels, you're doing six. Um, and then I reckon this is when Jay Hindley and Wilco and Ginha kept on riding at 6.2. And that's where the gap was made. Because if we look at Fausto Masnada's data here, um, then we can see that like the first part here was a lot higher. He did 6.4 on the wheels, um, which which is odd. So maybe his power data reads slightly higher than you expect because he was obviously on the wheels. But then he really blew up because then if you look at the average, obviously it's 6.1, but the last 20 minutes was 5.7. Um, we can now go on to James Knox's file as well. Um, his power, again, it's like it's all dependent on weight and all the rest of it. But if we look here again, 6.1 watts per kilo on the wheel, which I think is probably more realistic, 6, 6.1. The guy's doing 6.2 on the front. It, it's not um, a super fast climb at this point. I mean, 19k an hour is still pretty quick. Like you, the draft is definitely feel, but compared to the end, not as much. And then Knox at the end was struggling. Did 5.4. He just basically sat on um, Gu, 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 Gu Sang, and that's all we saw from him. So I think this is probably the highest cl level climbing performance because you know he's doing 409 normalized. So you know 6.2, 6.3 watts per kilo here. Was uh, Chris Hamilton, and like that for 20 minutes at the end of a stage would be pretty high performance. And most people would say, "Oh, that's a bit sus." But like 6.2 for 40 minutes, which is effectively what Jay Henley did, is absolutely unbelievable. It was more crazy than the Parasude. The Parasude was six and a half for 25 minutes, which okay, fair enough, it's the tour. You'd expect it to be higher numbers, but I'd say this is more impressive. 6.2 for 40 minutes at the end of a okay, it's not a, an impossible mountain stage, but it's, it's pretty decent. Um, so I think, and then you might be like, okay, well, maybe everyone's power meter is under reading. But then we have Nibli's file from uh, 2017, actually, when Mika Lander won up this climb. Uh, obviously, ignore the watts per kilo here, but he does weigh around 60, 65 kilos. 65 kilo, sorry. So his watts per kilo for this would be about six. 
and he did in a 3907 which again on the segment here you can see is a minute slower a minute and 30 seconds slower almost than jay hinley so or jay hinley i think is how it's pronounced and like yeah it's crazy the level is ridiculous like you know pino nibali de moulin on that day everyone was like okay fire was slightly later in the race but even so the level is something else brandon minolti 409 watts he's about 66 67 kilos so again six watts per kilo so all these people's power data agrees it's about six watts per kilo here because i was talking with lantern and he was like oh i reckon it's all the power meter it's a bit dodgy and stuff i don't think it is but 1800 van for 40 minutes is bonkers like ridiculous like normally to win a tour stage you need to be able to climb about 1650 to 17 comfortably but i right, close to 1800 i think could be yeah as i said the highest level performance of the year obviously the pair sued by by pagaccio was pretty impressive but i mean you know he rode six and a half for 25 minutes with a somewhat piquillo attack at 11 for 11 minutes sorry but this is ridiculous 6.4 to 6.2 watts per kilo would be my estimation probably about 6.2 6.3 um it's unbelievable I, I don't think i've ever seen power data like this to be honest um it's i've you know normally you say you know like let's say Vlasov he wins the um the state the sorry the race on one bond two has 5.8 for 40 minutes it's a one day race okay maybe before is a little bit harder but he's doing 6.2 in the middle of the Giro, mate, that's that's something else. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts. I think this is, I think it is the highest level climbing performance I've ever seen. Um, well, this year at least, um, definitely. So um, obviously, leave your comments below. What do you think about this? Do you think it's the highest level performance ever? Like in cycling, probably not, but this year for sure, it's it's crazy. Um, it's really really crazy, and the time gaps here are unheard of in modern if i say modern the last two three years no one's been putting minute 40s into people up mountains and since like froom dog did in 2015 psl mountain stage 16 that was a good stage but like i haven't seen gaps like this and think about the tour think how boring the tour was when everyone used to finish within about five seconds they would sprint the last kilometer these boys are just flying and tearing the race up you know normally i think you'd have rafa micah doing six watts per kilo probably here 6.1 maybe for 40 minutes and you probably win it and now it's like nah you, well you need to do 6.3 minimum it's crazy um that's yeah absolutely bonkers um so anyway cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next one